Hello, Wanderers. Welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following young Lord Corliss Seaspray, the scion of House Velaryon. And in that last episode, there was a lot of politics being played, namely around our inheritance and our betrothal to young Lady Lynesse Hightower. Indeed, we are betrothed to a Lady of House Hightower, though not the one that we would choose. Of course, we do still have a crush on young Lady Sheriss of House Hightower. However, Considering the political situation surrounding Lord Corliss as the Lord Paramount of the Narrow Sea and the heir to the Reach, well, naturally, the vast amounts of power and influence that we are set to inherit had to have some checks on them. I mean, Daenerys is obviously, you know, she's not simply going to accept uh, having somebody so powerful. Uh, and with so much influence and the son of such a great man uh, holding all of those cards. And not only that, but the Lords of the Reach are also going to be wary about a Valarion inheriting. So our mother, Lady Marjorie, had to play things pretty carefully. And so that was how this deal was struck. We would gain the support of House Hightower by arranging that marriage, but House Hightower will still remain the lords of Old Town under Lady Sheris, and so a Valarian won't be inheriting Old Town, at least. <laughs> That's how things stand now, anyways. But I think that that was the natural natural way for things to go. It, you know, the, all the whatever wishes that we might have as a young lord, they don't really mean much. Lady Paramount Marjorie here... Daenerys, all these other Lord Paramounts and the people on Daenerys's council, they're the ones who are going to be making these decisions. In Game of Thrones, I don't think you have very many options over who you marry. And so that's uh, that's the situation we find ourselves in here, which is, you know, rather unfortunate for young Lord Corlys. I'm sure he is feeling like he doesn't have a lot of control over his life. And so I imagine he might be seeking out some ways to get control back over his life. Our mother, Lady Marjorie, has returned to the Reach after introducing us to our betrothed. And so we remain in Driftmark under the good tutelage and uh, of our uh, uh, steward here, or our Seneschal, Malik Webb. Uh, in addition to that, our the knight who is training us, our uncle, Lord Russell of the Reach, and our regent, uh, Lady Emma, who is his wife, and our sister, of course. And so we remain in Driftmark to essentially consolidate uh, control uh, and, you know, be make a presence known to the lords of uh, the Narrow Sea here in order to ensure that uh, they respect us uh, for the Lord Paramount that we are. Now, there are going to be some plans being made, I'm sure, but a young man of 13 only has so much he can do. And so while we consider what we can do, we will be taking a very close look at what happens here in the Stormlands. There is a battle going on, which it seems as though uh, House Penrose is going to lose, which might not secure a, a, a complete loss for them, but it's going to make things very difficult now. I asked you guys in the last episodes what your thoughts were on the situation in the Stormlands, and some people thought that perhaps, you know, if uh, the the three lords here, these three Storm Lords, would manage to put young Lord Hugh Baratheon uh, back in charge of the Stormlands, back in the traditional Baratheon seat of Storm's End, uh, that, you know, there wouldn't maybe be much Daenerys could do about that because, you know, she couldn't risk uh, further ire of the Lords of the Stormlands. And I think that maybe there is a point to be made there, but I don't necessarily know how much water that holds to make a water, <laughs> a sea-related pun from House Valarion here, because not only is are they putting you know, young Lord Hugh back in charge of the Stormlands. That's their intention here. But the situation's a little bit more deep than that because the person who is leading this rebellion, Lord Glendon Silverax, a famous knight and a famous warrior, 
as you will remember from the previous season, he is the mother and the grandfather of young Lord Hugh. And his he is the father of her uh, his mother, Alan A. Fell. Not only that, but obviously he clearly cares deeply for his daughter here. But he had a good friend lip, friendship with Sir Renly Baratheon, former King Renly Baratheon here. So I think that there's more to this than simply putting young Lord Hugh on the uh, in the seat of uh, Storm's End here. I don't think that that's all Lord Glendon have, has planned. I imagine his intention is to have Lord Hugh usurp Daenerys, and I suspect that perhaps that has something to do also with the faction that is being led by Rob Stark here. Now, obviously, we know that Rob and Daenerys do not see eye to eye ever since uh, Rob's father was banished to the wall. And actually, I did just notice before starting the episode that Lord Commander Eddard is, or that Ned Stark is the Lord Commander here. I didn't make that happen. That just, he inherited it from the previous Lord Commander, I guess. So, um, yeah, that which is, but that's awesome, actually. I mean, it totally makes sense. Um, I don't actually know how the Night's Watch determines who becomes the next, you know, Lord Commander, but I think it's pretty cool that... <laughs> Uh, Ned Stark is in that position. Now, one thing I do, I know I'm just rambling on here without getting time going. Uh, I guess we can get time going here. I'll put it to slow. There's one thing I want to point out. There has been a bug with the game. And that bug is that, unfortunately, nobody can create independence or dissolution factions against Daenerys. For some reason, as you can see here, it's marking Daenerys as not an independent ruler. Now, I went through the game and I tried a bunch of different things. You can see that they uh, they lost the battle here. I tried a bunch of different things to make this work, uh, to try to fix it. You know, I switched Daenerys's titles and I gave them to other people and nothing could work. For some reason, it just says she's not independent. If anybody has some suggestions of how to fix that, I would love to hear them, but yeah, for whatever reason, it's bugged out. So so I don't know if we'll ever be able to have independence or dissolution factions against Daenerys or potentially her heirs, which sucks, but maybe, maybe if she dies, it'll fix it. But I just wanted to explain that bug to you because I think that if this Liberty faction fires and they win... I suspect that I will probably consider this something of an independence war, and I'll probably just go through console commands and manually uh, put uh, the North into an independent state. I imagine that's kind of uh, Rob's intention here. Um, I think if they could start an independence faction, they potentially would, um, but it's just the game's bugged up, so... Uh, sometimes we have to deal with those situations. It's unfortunate. Now, one thing that I'm considering, though, is oh, let's uh, let's do our little squire event. Uh, we can we can deliver this message. It's fine. Uh, one thing. Oh, there's a disease spreading in the stormlands here. Daenerys has declared war on Captain Gregor. What? Captain. What the hell is going? <laughs> Captain Gregor, the mountain that the mountain of the Andalusi band. What the hell? What is this war? War of revenge. <laughs> this is awesome. I <laughs> Gregor Clegane. I guess. Well, Sandor is the Lord of Hound Hill. He. Ooh, Sanders. <laughs> you are looking rough, my friend. Severely injured. Lover's box burned. Sodomite? Okay. Um, interesting that his wife's just drunk. Okay, I this is interesting. I imagine this war of revenge that we have here is just Daenerys. So the uh, Gregor, the mountain that rides, is probably just a bandit. I bet you he's just going around here 
like in the Riverlands, or maybe he's in the Stormlands right now, you know, just like causing chaos like he did in the books. And so Daenerys is just sending out, uh, you know, her version of Beric Dondarrion, because uh, the current Beric Dondarrion is uh, busy. She's sending out someone to go and deal with the mountain, which is pretty, pretty cool. I don't know how she can actually do anything. Well, apparently it says he's over here and but whatever. That's <laughs> the role play aspect of it is interesting. I think I don't think that he would actually be over here. He's probably raiding around in the Stormlands for whatever reason. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting, I think. Oh, we've got, yeah, some diseases spreading. This is a little concerning. How's, how's Penrose doing? Still minus 66%. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull something back here, but we'll see. Greetings, my liege. Please come to my gathering in Dragonstone. It'll be great fun. I mean, we'll go. Um, Just because, you know, I want to I get some interesting events. Some people did point out. Uh, even though we probably don't want to go, I think we just have to go because, you know, uh, obligations of a lord. One thing that's interesting is that even though we, you know, Eddard is our bully and he's unfortunately... Ooh, we, we visited the location of the Sack of High Tide. That's cool. Um, during the Dance of Dragons, yes. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, our bully has a crush on his sister who is his betrothed, so we're probably not too happy about all of that, I imagine. Gaining some martial experience, which is nice. All right, let's get this over with. We don't want to be here, but we have to be, so. Four months until it ends. We can only do recreation, which is unfortunate. I wish there were more options for events and stuff for when you are a, a, a kid, but... We'll see if anything pops up here. Alyssa, a commoner from Dragonstone, okay, is obviously hiding something, but just as she agrees to tell me what it is, my friend and sister Isabella, oh, uh, well, um, we're obviously going to hang up with our sister, not just some random peasant woman. I don't think we really care about uh, intrigue and such too much. Hmm... This is an interesting decision. And frankly, the whenever you play this game, you almost always choose I will not be threatened, right? Because usually you can beat the the enemy faction. Um and and it's and I'm sure we could easily beat this faction too. Like if we look at it, you know, they've got a couple lords here. It's Lucerus, who's, what, getting married here? Okay. Oh, we've our Castellan. Damn. Uh, but I just, the thing is, I don't think that, like, going to war in this situation is, like, the right option. It's not just, you know... In Game of Thrones, although, you know, perhaps the Brackens and the Blackwoods will sometimes get into skirmishes and stuff, things like this, like things like a small civil war happening in the Stormlands, and that does not happen that much in Game of Thrones, except in times of war. Uh, and so, you know, we are a young man. These, And this isn't, well, I mean, the way that this letter is worded, um, kind of makes it seem like a, a more of a threat. But I can imagine that this is our, you know, these some of these guys are our counselors and that this is them basically forcefully suggesting this. So I'm actually going to go against the... Well, fuck, we are stubborn, though. Uh, and arbitrary. You know, I'm still going to go against it because I don't think that... Every situation needs to, to lead to war. We're 13 years old. Our council comes in here, you know, making this forceful suggestion. We're a little bit arbitrary, so maybe we just don't even care that much, honestly. Um, and so, yeah, I think we're going to we're going to go with that option. I know that this is going to there's going to probably be a lot of people who are saying that we, you know, probably should have just, you know, killed the rebels. 
kind of thing. But I actually think that um, choosing that option makes more sense for the context of the situation that we're in. Perhaps if we were a little bit older, uh, we might have we might have done that. But yeah, I don't think we would just go about slaughtering our vassals because they want a little bit more autonomy. So yeah, uh, but I'm sure there's going to be people who disagree there. So, but hey, we're arbitrary. So sometimes we can make choices like that. We're exploring the local sept when my kinswoman Darissa and I stumble across my sept in Matthew surrounded by scrolls. These are journal from long ago. Uh, tell me about adventure. Uh, we could get another friendship, but I'd actually, we're going to try this option here. Oh, we could potentially have lost the trait pensive. That's actually interesting. Cool. Um, we're going to continue our squire training, of course. Yeah, so we lost... Well, we didn't lose any dread because we didn't have any. We lost some legitimacy, which is... Uh, oh, where do we even look at that? Yeah, our legitimacy is down a little bit, but we'll be able to bring that back up. Honestly, I don't think it was that bad, but we did. So... Alice, the daughter of my Castellan, Lord Courtney, and I agree. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's um, let's do a different option than we did the, the last time here. The merchant runs you off. Well, that's unfortunate. Tried to trick him with a few uh, of our fake coins there. Well, you know, can't blame a kid for trying. Oh, Lord Penrose is taking it back a little bit. Hey, maybe he actually might win. Neighboring ruler won a war. Oh, the pirates are getting antsy down there, too. I brought a small book with me, as I usually do. And Alice, the daughter of my castellan, Lord Courtney, finds me just as I'm settling down to read a few pages. Oh, is that the 10,000 ships? The 10,000 ships of... Uh, oh, uh, totally blanking. Uh, Nameria Martel? Nameria Martel? Blanking on the name. Pretty sure I'm close, though. <laughs> Anyways, uh, she wants to discuss it. Alice Quince, or go away. I am reading. Could lose some stress. Yeah, go away. I'm reading. That's uh, that's what I say there. <laughs> you know, we're just a little bit, we're stubbornly reading our book here. Oh, the fun we had. I don't know if we really had that much fun. It seems like we just kind of kept to ourselves the whole time. Uh, I think we're happy to leave. So we shall. I'll return home. Two drift mark there. Thank the seven who are one. I can go inside again. Uh, one thing that I have slowly been working on is the restoration of high tide. Uh, we will continue along with that. Uh, let's see. What's probably the best thing to build there? Mm, let's see. Workshops could be good. Warrior lodges. You know what? Let's uh, do the warrior lodges in here. So there we go. Some people have been asking me to spend a little bit more time showing some of this like mechanical stuff, like building up the things. And I do a lot of that off screen. You know, I'll occasionally pay for retinues off screen. You'll see we have like lots of retinues now. Um, I do that stuff off screen. But if you guys like to see that on screen, I can try to do that uh, a little bit more often. Uh, just continuing the squire training here. We must be close. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, we're pretty much we're pretty much done our squire training. There we go. Okay. Well, if, uh, we have a loyalist faction being put in place uh, by young Lord Armand here. Oh, he's the leader of it. Oh, good. Finally, some some loyal people here. Obviously, Evatho is loyal. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see that uh, it's a young uh, the young Lord of Sharp Point here. Oh, then he disbands the faction. No. Still, I thought that counts. How are you doing? He's he's still surviving. Glendon Silveraxe. I don't know. I think Daenerys is not getting involved yet because, you know, she's probably trusting Lord Paramount uh, John to handle this situation. If he isn't able to, that's when I think Daenerys is going to step in. So Lord Paramount John's job is like, literally on the line if he fails he loses it if he succeeds then he secures his position in the stormlands and secures the position for his dynasty 
To make my Chancellor Lord Merrick more susceptible to my attempts at approaching him. Oh yeah, we're trying to win over some of our people, but sadly, uh, sadly that didn't help us when they put that uh, demand to us, which is rather unfortunate. We could also continue to build up Spice Town. We need a little bit more money there, but uh, I mean, we oh, we're fourteen years of age, actually. You know, it might be a cl close to time. Oh wait, we have been, have we been knighted? Was there? There was no event for that. Oh, that's unfortunate. I kind of thought that an event pops up when you get knighted. Um. Well, in any case, our uncle Lord Russell has. Oh, our mother's. <laughs> our mother's been taking to the drink. Ugh. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, you know, she's drinking too much of that uh, that wine in the reach. So we have been knighted by our uncle Sir Russell, which is, you know, a great honor. Obviously, uh, you know, a young man would uh, like nothing more than to become a knight. And so I think that we are, um, you know, feeling pretty good about that, feeling pretty confident, pretty proud. Uh, what's the first uh, act that we're going to do as a new knight? Well, consider this, you know, one, we just we were just forced into a betrothal to somebody that we weren't really that interested in um, against, you know, not necessarily against our wishes, but certainly... Well, yeah, I guess uh, against our wishes, because our wishes was to be married to Lady Sherris, who is now betrothed to a Tyrell. An, oh, gosh. The son of Lord Garland. Uh, our cousin. So our crush is getting married to our cousin. Ugh. You know, that's uh, that we're probably stewing over this when we hear this news. Not only that, but then these lords come in making demands of this oh i mean imagine being young lord corliss in this situation well now we are knighted and we're sick of people you know telling us what to do we are a lord paramount we can choose what we do and so i think what we are going to do is we are going to call up the valarion fleet and we are going to sail it into the step zones and we are going to deal with some of these pirates here so we're gonna go after the Lord Lord Dalton here, and not only that, but this is this might be a full-on campaign. We've got claims here as well. Let's go for Dwarfstone too. What about here? Do we have claims on this? Now uh, we could free the slaves of Rexstone. Hmm. Uh, mostly looking to conquer right now. Oh yeah, and we've got claims on here too. Hell oh, yeah! You know what? Let's do it. We're gonna go in. We're gonna take the Valarion fleet. And we're going to crush these pirates. And we're going to go in ourselves. Now, obviously, we can't lead this as a commander. But I think we're going to put Evitho in charge. And we're going to tell Evitho that we are coming with him. Uh, you know, we might be a young man of 14. But we are a knight. We, you know, we are a lord. And I don't think that he can uh, honestly stop us from doing it. So we've got 9,000 troops here. That should certainly be enough. Uh, so we're going to send them in. Do we land in Blood Point first? You know, probably not a bad idea. Maybe we hit these pirates here just as they come after us. Some of them are, what, sailing to Astermont? I'm not too worried about those pirates trying to, like, siege us down or something like that. Let's go and deal with these pirates. So this is going to be our first taste of battle now. Like I said, obviously, our character cannot participate in the battle. We're only 14 years old. But we can imagine that we are there participating in this. Maybe not in the thick of it, but who knows? Maybe we would get in the thick of it too. So let's crush this first pirate band here. I don't think they're going to survive long. Evitho just easily smashes them. We're going to head over here into Rexstone and fi finish them off. Get the siege done there. We'll probably split the forces and send some of them down to deal with the Pirates of Dwarfstone as well. Indeed, let's... Uh, we don't even need to split them. We'll just leave enough here to uh, to siege it down. Well, well we need 2,000, which is still a fair amount. Here we go. So Evitho is going to crush these guys as well. Siege down Dwarfstone here. 
There we go. Crush some more. And we're, lit de oh, we're known for our dedication to the faith. People are happy that, you know, we are dealing with these pirates here. Ooh, and we can get another dynasty legacy. I've been thinking about what we're going to do with this one. There's a couple options. Obviously, adventure is a pretty cool one to go down. Uh, we've already got quite a few in blood, so I'm not too worried about that. We've got one in glory here. What I want to do is Heroes of Old because we gained this a mighty endeavor for a Valarion legend seed. I don't know what that does. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. So I think we're going to do that and we're going to try to do a mighty endeavor. I don't know if that's a decision or, you know, like how how we actually do that. Maybe somebody can explain in the comments, but that's uh, that's what we're going to try anyways. So here we go. The sieges of the pirates continue. And yeah, young Lord Corliss here gets his first taste of battle here. You know, people were pushing us around, you know, for most of our young life. Well, now's finally a chance to take back some, you know, authority into our own hands, to take control of our own fate. That We don't have our mother here to tell us <laughs> that we can't do this. We are the Lord of the Narrow Sea, and we are going to do what our father was unable to do all those many years ago. So we're going to head here. Uh, I'm not too concerned about this. I'm sure our spy master will manage this swimmingly. Now oh, there's some situation going on here. Are we sieging it down? We are. All right, let's get this siege done. And... Yeah, once we get... Oh, what? I'm surprised we're only at 50% on Rexstone here. Hmm, interesting. No matter. We're gonna... There we go. So we deal with one pirate. Valuable... Oh, he actually looks kind of like... Kind of like us. That's interesting. Uh, in any case, we're going to enforce our demands on these pirates there. We're gonna bring our army over... Uh, should we be concerned? Nope, we don't have any sieges going on. All right, I'm not. Don't see anything particular to worry about here. Why? Yeah, I'm concerned. I'm not sure why we've only got part of Rexstone, uh, or we're only at four fifty percent there. That seems a little odd. In any case, we're probably gonna go. And start a siege down over here. Ooh. Nope, maybe not. We're gonna We're gonna pull back. We grabbed the wrong army there. We gotta get Evitho's army. Alright, this one's the one that's gonna go. Alright, let's deal. Ooh. So this is not uh, a necessarily an easy victory. Can we leave a few more troops? Let's see. Combine these armies. Let's put Evitho back in charge. How's that looking? Defending in the hills. This would be a tough fight, but I think Evitho is feeling re relatively confident. But you will pro it says we will probably lose. Uh huh. Are we feeling are we feeling cocky? I don't know. How good of a commander is Evitho? He's not a great commander. I think he's feeling confident. Uh, I think we're going to go for it. We'll see. Oh, you know what? Oh, oh, we might. Oh, I was worried. It was looking like it was going the other way. But I think that we are going to pull <laughs> pull a victory out here. Oof, that was close. Bonifer Seashade was slain in the battle. We should take a look at these just in case here. Well, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it after the end of this, uh, this current one here. Evitho getting some kills, Asario getting some kills. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look here in just a moment. I know I'm a little all over the place, but that's just how it goes sometimes here on the Striking Channel. Uh, my mind flits from thing to thing, and uh, that's just simply how it be sometimes. There we go. But we did find victory there. What do we have here? Eddard wants to sign an alliance with us. He has recovered from his wounds. Do we accept? 
Um, I do not accept. <laughs> you know, we're we're dealing with other things. I think we had ignore our cousin's letter. Uh, I don't need to worry about that siege. I do need to make sure our army here is secure. There we go. Okay, there we go. We get that victory there. Enforce those demands, so be it. And now we can bring, bring our army in here and deal with the, the rest of the pirates down here. So there we go. Let's uh, bring everybody together. Do we have anybody who's good at sieging? We never do. Almost. It's so rare for us to get a siege commander that I don't even bother half the time checking because well, we almost never get them. But in any case, we're gonna we're gonna get the siege going here. So so far this campaign is going pretty well. Evitho Evitho High Hammer. What a Badass nickname. That's pretty epic here. Oh, and look at this. Both of his children are, are fighting as well. Barbo Siouf and Doshi Siouf. Uh, they're all fighting together. Oh, looks like we're going to get in another battle as well. This time we should have the advantage. Looks like we'll have the advantage anyways. Oh, yeah, I did say I was going to take a look at these details. All right, so let's take a look here then. Our knight Larissa was wounded. Briglo Seafire wounded some enemies. And we slew a few of them. Uh, killed Master Peregrine. Evara was wounded. Lord Esmond the Barber of Tarth slew somebody in battle. That was pretty good. And then Bonifer Seashade. Yeah, I was slain there. So a couple people getting some kills there. I'll take the details here. Nothing of concern. What about in this battle? Uh... Asario, our Bravosi teacher, getting some kills. Lord Allen, getting some kills as well. We captured, uh, we captured some people. That's good. And then in this final one, Lord Allen the Wise, another slaying. Lord Darren of Massey's Hook, excellent. There we go. So far, uh, things are going pretty well in this campaign, I would say. Oh, how's things in this? Well, all right, things are going to get real interesting at the end of this episode. Oh, and there's a new Pirate King as well. Things are getting really interesting here. That's for sure. We're going to have to consider the consequences of, of this <laughs> entire situation here um, as we get the siege done on this final Pirate Island, but... Oh, and now there's already defending against you in the narrow. What? House Peasbury has an. A... Don't even add... look. I can explain a lot of things with creative thinking through RP, but don't ask me to explain how Lord Peasbury is allied with some pirates down here and is fighting against me in this war because I. <laughs> I don't have an explanation for it. Maybe some people more creative than me do. But uh, the question is, what is Daenerys going to do? You know, Lord Fell here put the Baratheons back in charge here, but I don't think that they intend to stop here. And he is the regent as well. So this is obviously a major concern for Daenerys. Got an excommunication here. Oh man, things are getting things are getting very, very tense here in the Iron Throne. I don't know what do you guys think Daenerys would do in this situation? Is she going to try to revoke uh, Hugh's position? Is Lord Fell going to team up with uh, with Rob Stark and essentially push for an end to Daenerys? That's got to be their plan. You know, that I, I can't imagine that, you know, Glendon's final, you know, this was exactly what he wanted, you know? I don't think so. His daughter was once queen. His friend was once king. And now he has the backing of the Stormlands. 
he potentially has the backing of the North. I don't know. I think that war might be coming. And I suspect that we will have to consider how that might all play out in the next episode. So leave your comments down below. I know this one was a little bit of a, a crazy one, a little bit all over the place, but hopefully you guys were able to follow it a, a, along with it well enough. Anyways, but yeah, this I think things are good. Oh, God. And look at this in the reach. Just a horrible disease spreading here in the reach. Things are getting crazy here. We are in, in the Westerlands, sickness spreading, rebellions in the Stormlands. Like, you can't imagine that the Stormlands are, you know, happily under the yoke of Daenerys here. I That just does not seem plausible to me. Who knows how things are all going to play out? We will have to discover that in the next episode, though. Until then, Wanderers, thank you for watching.